His name is James Smitty Smith. He's the guru we go to when we want to talk boxing, especially heavyweight boxing, and a couple of big topics. Obviously, Joseph Parker versus Joyce and No Fury Joshua fight. James, welcome back to the show, mate. Hey, great to uh, to be with you. And yeah, I was I was very interested in the the fight over the weekend. Uh, uh, Joseph Parker, of course, I followed his career from the get go. You know, being that being that I've done so much with uh, New Zealand. Uh, uh, media and what have you and uh the guy that knocked him out <laughs> uh, in round number 11 i think is going to present anyone with all kinds of difficulties uh in the in the heavyweight division so uh we can talk about it <laughs> well yeah okay what impressed you about joyce i mean his chin certainly impressed me he took a pounding i thought but you know in the end he actually delivered delivered the the one blow that won the fight you, you know what he reminds me of marty he reminds me of a lower case George Foreman, plotting at times, methodical, not fun to watch, but he has high volume. He throws a lot of punches. Amazingly, he does everything off of his jab. He's got a granite chin, and being able to knock out and become the only guy to stop Joseph Parker and doing it in round number 11, when you wonder, a lot of guys have power early, but even Mike Tyson didn't have power late. So to be able to possess that type of power to put a guy like Parker, who has a pretty good chin, down and out uh, was, I think, something very impressive. And again, I think it's his steady assault that he puts and applies on his opponent. He, he wears you down, not only physically, uh, but mentally as well. And I think right now there's only a few guys, maybe only one that I would even make you know, the favorite to beat him. So uh, I was very impressed. He's 37 years old, but he's a young 37 because he only has 15 fights. And, oh, by the way, 14 knockouts. One of them, uh, unfortunately for Parker, he, he joins that part of that ledger. In this corner, TV.com, that's the man's website. That's his podcast. That's his Twitter handle. And I know that you've got a podcast and going to be talking about this guy. Where does he go from here? Let's talk about Joyce before we talk about our man, Joseph. Can he go and actually fight Tyson Fury or Usyk eventually? You know, I would make him a f a, the favorite over any heavyweights out there with the exception of Fury and perhaps Deontay Wilder. But Wilder's got a fight coming up against Hellenius, Robert Hellenius, which I think is no walk in the park for him. We uh, Wilder's been training training here in Las Vegas. And, uh, in fact, his trainer, one of his trainers, will be on my show next week, which will be the day that is his fight on the 15th airs. But I think that Joyce would actually be too big and formidable for Usyk. Despite Usyk being a great boxer, I don't think he has the power – keep this guy off of him fury is actually a little bit bigger than joyce and has some maneuverability but so i might make him the favorite but other than that i i and, and maybe wilder depending on how wilder looks be, because of his punching power but but joyce has a great chin what i'm saying long-windedly is there really isn't anybody out there that i think he can't deal with and perhaps even beat so i think he's a force to be reckoned with, even at 37 years of age. Okay, so okay. Well, just explain the young bit to us, because that's the you know. Okay, he's young in terms of the punishment he's taken. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, and you know he had a he had a really good amateur career. Some guys, by the time they're 37, they're completely shot. I mean, Canelo's on the other side of it, and he's only 32, but he's a lighter fighter. Heavyweights, as you know, can go until their 30s. And in some cases, in the case of a guy named Big George Foreman, he won the heavyweight title when he knocked out Michael Moore at age 45. This guy, I don't know if he can go that long, but he's only had 15 professional fights, and he's always coming off of his front foot. In other words, he's always the guy coming forward, usually applying the pressure, 14 knockouts in his 15 fights, so he hasn't suffered any real punishment, has a great chin, so I just think he's a guy that is a young 37, whereas, what, Parker is, is, is much younger, about seven years younger, and yet just appears to me to be completely on the other side of it. You know, 30, he's, he's had 33 or 34, 33 or 34 professional fights, and he's just, oh, it, it, everybody's body 
is different. I mean, you know, look at me. I'm a I'm a sexual king at at age sixty three, but you are. everybody's not Smitty, you know. That's right. Man. Okay. So with Joseph though, as you say, how I, I don't know how I segued into that. Well, I'm going, I tell you what, I'm, I'm I just sitting here. I took that one on the chin. <laughs> I rolled back, and I thought I'll come <laughs> meet you in the middle of the ring afterwards, James. So Joseph, let's talk about him then. Thirty to three is his record. Yeah. Um, and I'll read you a couple of quotes from straight after his fight. He says, "I want to get straight back in. I've got to keep training hard. It wasn't my night tonight, but I want to be straight back in again." Smitty, it, it, I mean, you, you're the expert. That's why we, we get you on. But to my untrained eye here, I've watched a lot of boxing, of course, over the years. He just doesn't appear to me to have the weaponry to be able to challenge the top guys. He's close. And, you know, and that's and that's still something to be really proud of. But he's not a world heavyweight champion in the sense that he's going to be recognized and feted and fated. And he's going to be like a Tyson Fury. He's never going to unite all of these belts. And I don't know whether he's going to get another chance to actually even try. You know... I've changed a lot, even since the time I've known you on all of this, because I happen to host the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I've interviewed more world champions than anybody on earth. And I think Parker's an overachiever. I used to talk to you years and years ago and, and Brendan Telfer and others. And, uh, you know, I even told Kevin Barry, who trained him for many years, that for me, David Tua was a, was a better fighter. David Tua was a guy that should have been a champion, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for the Tua man uh, because of you know because, well because of a lot of things we won't get into right now. It just didn't work out. Lennox Lewis had something to do with that too. But you're right; he has overachieved. He's actually won a belt, and I think, given today's landscape, that he's made a lot of money. He seems like a a, a really nice guy. I know there were all kinds of rumors and things about there about his personal life that things might be coming undone and, and things with the law. I don't know whatever happened with that because I'm not there. But all I know is he has a, a, a good reputation in the fight game. He's won a title. He's only been stopped this one time. However, if he has the means to retire, I think he should get out right now with all of his brains intact. There's a lot of stuff he can do. And again, I know he's had huge paydays, including the one this past uh, Saturday. I would love to see my if, if, if Joseph is listening, I would say get out of boxing, train, you know, get out of it as, as an active fighter, uh, because you are right. He is not going to beat this guy in a rematch. He is not going to beat Usyk. He he's not going to fight Fury or, and beat him and their buddies anyway. So it, 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 the the only way uh, for him now is down. Everything's going to be down. And in boxing, it's not like other sports uh, because you don't play boxing when your life is on the line. So if I were him, I would quit. I think he's been an overachiever and a real credit to boxing uh, in New Zealand. But if you're asking me where he ranks in terms of history there with New Zealand, Fox, David Tua still for me, even though he never won a, a world title, I still think David Tua uh, for me – and people in boxing in the know, we would always put Tua ahead of him. But but Joseph has a lot to be proud of. James, is that because David Tua had the knockout punch? And that's what we want from heavyweights, isn't it? We want to see the guy put the other guy down. And David Tua had that. Well, and because there's always been a fascination with Mike Tyson. And who se seemed to resemble Mike Tyson in many ways was David Tua. Short in stature, stocky, tremendous power. The one thing, though, that David Tua even had better than Mike Tyson was late power. Mike couldn't knock you out after seven, eight, nine rounds. Tua could knock you out in the first minute of a fight, ask John Ruiz, or he could knock you out late in a fight. You know, ask David Eisen and all the guys he knocked out in 10, 11, and 12, Rockman and those guys. So it's just unfortunate the timing and, and the opponents and a damn guy named Lennox Lewis – and a, a horrible fight against Lewis uh, that here in, in in Las Vegas. But uh, yeah, the power is the main thing. When we everybody loves, you know, power. It's sexy, you know. All right, James. Let's move then to our second topic in this corner. TV.com is the man's handler's website and everything else. And that is No Fury versus Joshua. We heard that news that there was meant to be a, 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 a date, a time, a signature on a contract. It hasn't happened. So Fury says neither is the fight going to. Yeah, the only thing I'm more sick of than Fury is Floyd Mayweather going up and oh, beating up little Lord. Japanese guys. Stop the, it. Or, and, and there's oh, I'm sorry, there's one other person, Jake Paul. That 
between Jake Paul and Tyson Fury and, and, and Floyd Mayweather, I've had it with all of them. They're, they're, you know, I, I, Fury said he was going to quit. We knew he wouldn't. Then he, he, he does what I thought was a commendable thing of offering this guy a shot so that the U.K. And, and let's face it, the world doesn't give a damn about Fury and Joshua. The only the U.K., it's a U.K. fight. It's nobody in, I don't even believe many in New Zealand give a hoot about that fight. We certainly don't care about it over here across the pond. But I give Fury credit at first. But to try to handle the entire negotiation over social media and to have every other word be the F word or, or some you know, really nasty uh, word and words, uh, it's just, you know, I just don't, I'm just not into his game. Um, he's, he, he is the best heavyweight in the world right now until somebody beats him. But, uh, you know, I would, I would like to see the fight so that my friends in the UK could, because they're great boxing fans. Boy, are they good, much better than we are over here. But um, I, I, I would love to see them get the fight. But I tell you what would be a way more competitive fight, the guy that we started out talking about, Joe Joyce, would give Fury fits.